You're about to see the Wilderness Strong method for making a primitive fishing kit. No modern gear or tools allowed, just raw materials collected from the wild and authentic Aboriginal methods for turning those materials into hooks, fishing line, weights, and a reel. With the help, of course, from a few of our favorite primitive tools. All of that is coming up. I'm Luke, this is Wilderness Strong, and we're all about nature, bushcraft, ethnobotany, and wilderness survival. If you're into all that, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of the exciting content that we've got in store for you. Now with all that said, let's jump right into this. Now we've caught countless fish for decades now using primitive methods. For this method, we're gonna start by collecting thorns from a hawthorn tree that we can use for our fish hooks. Now hawthorn fruit is actually edible, even though it's pretty bland to the taste. Native Americans here in the Pacific Northwest would eat it fresh or cooked. They'd also mash it up into cakes and dry it for winter food storage. Then they'd make a deer marrow soup and dip the cakes in the soup to soak up the much needed fat. There are several varieties of hawthorn which have very sharp thorns, but only a couple are native where we live here in the Pacific Northwest. The Colombian hawthorn and the Douglas hawthorn, which is also called the black hawthorn even though its berries are red. There were about a dozen Native American tribes where we live that are on record as using this tree. They valued greatly the sharp spines and used them for fish hooks the same way that we're gonna do. The sapwood, the bark, and the roots were used for many other medicinal purposes and general health as well. Okay, here we're in the process of making our fish line. After splitting the nettle stock with one of our bone tools, we're gonna gently tap on the joints with a stone. Then as we peel off the fiber, we peel from both sides of each joint and hold the fiber taut around the finger. That way we can gently work off the broken stock. Doing it this way prevents the fiber from thinning out and breaking at the joint. After getting the nettle fiber off the stock, we can hold tight at one end and then run a finger through the split in the center to split the whole length. If you want smaller, finer fibers, you can continue in this method if you want. So there's two sizes of core that you'll want to make for your fishing line. One is a line just large enough that you know it's not gonna break with a heavy pull if you get a snag. And then also a leader line, which is very thin and will break if you get a snag too bad. As you can see, we're twisting both sides fairly tight clockwise and then overlapping them counterclockwise. And in this way, the cord will bind itself together and can't unravel. If the nettle is harvested in the late summer or early fall and then dried, and if the leader cord is made well, meaning that it's twisted and wrapped evenly, with each side being kept about the same size, it can be made very thin and still catch large fish. We caught a 15 inch trout with a nettle leader hardly bigger than a thread. We're testing this leader line out with some weights and it's holding pretty well, even up to 20 pounds. So you can imagine the size of fish that that could pull in. These are straight thorns which go right out of the end of some of the limbs and we're gonna use these to make some hooks. So we want to make some very thin fiber now for our wrapping the thorn onto the shaft. This fiber has to be very thin, thinner even than most thread. We need a small because we don't want a big bulge at the bottom of the hook, and we know that repeated wrapping is going to make this plenty strong. We're starting to wrap the thorn to the shaft here. The back end of the thorn doesn't have to be flush on the shaft, just right along the side of it. It has to be wrapped tightly using something close to a figure eight, but with an additional wrap around the shaft and then the thorn to keep them from slipping away from each other. We're going to be showing a few examples of tying here to make sure that you get to see what we're doing in the tying process. After binding the thorn to the shaft, we need to take the end of a leader line that we've pre-made and wrap it around the base of the hook between the lowest part of the barb and the shaft. We wrap it there once and then tie it with a square knot securely with its length heading up the shaft. Then with a thin nettle thread, we wrap the leader line to the shaft, both near the base of the shaft just above the thorn and also at the top of the shaft. Doing it like this makes it so that we can pull out a bit of the loop to squeeze our bait between the two ties to hold our bait securely on the hook. We find that a bone awl is really helpful to have on hand while we're fishing since the line slightly swells in the water and the awl can more easily be slipped between the shaft and the cord to pull out the loop from the bait rather than just using our fingers. Here we see the size difference between our main line and our leader line. 
To prepare these thorns, we have to smooth them out and get rid of all the bumps so that it can penetrate the fish better. Sometimes we leave the thorn uncut until after it's wrapped to the shaft, which makes it helpful in maneuvering the thorn to the correct position. About 35 years ago on a survival trip in the Steen Mountains, a student was able to make his own hook from a hawthorn tree and catch a nice 15-inch trout on the Blitzen River using a grub for bait. His pleasure and his excitement while he shared this catch with everyone at the fire that night perfectly captured the way we still feel when we're able to accomplish things using primitive methods and tools. Okay, here we're making a double hook and it's basically made the same way as a single. We wouldn't choose this for smaller trout, but it would definitely be beneficial in hooking a larger fish. Okay, we got seven hooks here, but a few were cut at slightly different angles. It's always good to experiment and try new things. Nearly 40 years ago, my dad had wondered if these thorns could be used to catch fish. And when he tried it, it worked. And it wasn't until later that he learned that Native Americans used hawthorn hooks the exact same way. And that has been typical for us with other successful experiments that we later found out had been done anciently. Okay, now we're going to talk about our fishing weights. Now chipping grooves into stones will definitely make effective fishing line weights. But that does take a lot of time, just like it takes a lot of time to drill through stone. This green drilling stone is a mix of jasper and it's set in the end of an ocean spray chute. Considering all the time and effort it takes to make these weights, it's pretty disheartening to lose one on a snag. So we had the idea to use bark wrapped around stones for fishing weights and that actually works extremely well. This bark is the inner bark from a cottonwood tree. The stones need to be a bit larger than one might initially think. This is because the nettle line is more buoyant than a modern fishing line and we need to get the bait down deep enough, even in the current, to where the fish are more likely to bite. We want our wrapped stones to have a line tied onto the cottonwood bark to hold it together and then tie to the fish line. About two and a half to three feet up from the hook is where we like to tie our weights, and it's best to tie the weights on with a cord that'll break before the leader, but strong enough to pull through some of the minor snags. Okay, we needed a fishing reel to wind our fishing line onto. This is a basalt stone that we've used for years. We use it primarily as a pecking stone, and it worked great to carve down this bone into an authentic type of fish reel. A beachcomber that we know brought this to us, and we believe it's a whalebone. Native Americans specifically used whalebones for fishing reels, so we were excited to make this part of our fishing kit. We carved both sides of the real concave so that the line won't slip off the end. We wanted to make it so that we could point it towards the water and have the line come off the reel and then stop the line by pointing it up. Typically, we need to assist the process by using our hands and then of course we need to wind it up by hand again according to how the fish is fighting. After we've pecked and carved the bone into shape, we use sharp stones and sandstones in the smoothing process. Now we've got about 40 feet of nettle fishing line on this reel, and we actually made two lines 40 feet in length in case we wanted to add some extra length or just have two lines out at the same time. Okay, here's our completed primitive fishing kit, which includes nettle fishing line, pre-made hooks with leader line attached, weights for your fishing line, extra nettle fiber in case we need to do some repair work or make additional leader line, or tie bait to the top of the hook. A primitive reel, which could also be made from wood, or if you don't have a reel, you can tie it onto a willow rod. A sharp fiber trimming stone to use when tying on the weights or trimming extra line. A bone awl for untying knots and spreading the bait loop on the hooks. A small saw for cutting a wooden stringer or a bark fish stringer for carrying our fish, or for cutting an extra willow pole. And of course, a sharp stone for cleaning the fish. Now, as we pulled out one of our favorite cleaning stones, we had a good laugh when we noticed there just happened to be an old fish scale on the one that we pulled out for the video. Physical evidence, I guess you could say, that this is an effective primitive fishing kit that has brought us many successes for many years, and I'm sure it will continue to do so for years to come. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn that notification on so you don't miss what's coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching.